Good evening, family of God, and very welcome to session two of Sonship, God's Divine Order. For those, those who don't know me, I'm Pastor Amanda Leroux. I live in South Africa, and um, Dr. Arthur Frost asked me to speak on this topic, Sonship, that's very, very near to my heart. So in session one, I explained to you that there is three things that marks children of God or sons of God, according to 1 John 3, verse 1 to 10. So I want to ask you again, kindly go and read 1 John 3, verse 1 to 10. The first two things that marks a child of God or a son of God is the bestowal of sonship is in verse one. And then the bestowal of, of and, and as I said in session one, that God bestowed his love on us to make us, to give us authority, to become sons of God, to become children of God. And the second thing was the hope of sonship, where I explained to you that those who hope to become like Christ purifies themselves. That was um, the, the two aspects of the mark of sonship that I spoke about. Now tonight, I'm going to speak about the third aspect, and that is the manifestation of sonship. This is very dear to my heart because the mandate of a son of God is clearly explained in the manifestation of sonship. And it's God's desire and the entire creation's desire that we as God's sons will be manifest, that our sonship will be manifest on this earth. So let us read 1 John 3 verse 9 to 10. The word says, whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. And this is a very serious scripture because the law defines the difference between the children of God or sons of God and the children of the devil. And the Lord says that those who are born of God does not sin because the seed of God remains in us, remains in us. The seed that God has placed in us that became a living seed, that's a lie. It remains in us. And, and because we are reborn and the seed of God is placed in us, Christ is in us, it becomes impossible really to sin. We would not want to sin out of our own will. But then the word, the scripture continues speaking of the children of God and the children of the devil that are manifested. And how, how uh, is the, how um, is the, are the children of, of God manifested? And it says, by practicing righteousness and by loving your brother. So there's two things that distinguish us as the children of God, as the sons of God, from the children of the devil. First of all, it's righteousness. Um, and you know that Jesus Christ paid with his blood for our righteousness. And we receive our righteousness by faith. We cannot work for it, but we receive it and we start to walk in our perched righteousness by faith. We receive it by faith. 
Righteousness is the revealed will of God. We live in the revealed will of God by faith. And then also, he distinguished children of God from the children of the devil by the love for brotherly love. Love for your neighbor. Love for your brother. So if we hate, if we envy, if we still have reservations who we love and who we don't love, then there is a problem. We can clearly see it from the scripture. So we see there are two aspects of the manifestation of sonship, of the sons of God, of the children of God. It is revealed in a life born of God, a new life, okay? And we spoke about it in session one, salvation. And then secondly, that results in righteousness and brotherly love. So those two things, those two characteristics distinguish us as children of God. And um, the purpose um, of, of the manifestation of sonship is we will, we will actually look intensive into the purpose of the manifestation of sonship. But what I want to say about brotherly love is this. Why is it so important to God? Why does brotherly love distinguish us from the children of the devil? Because the Lord in um, James 2 verse 8, he speaks of the law of love. And the law of love, if we keep the law of love, the word says we have done well. And the law of love is to love your neighbor as yourself. So for God to love God above everything else and to love my neighbor as myself is to do well, is to fulfill the, the, the law that applied to us of the salvation. This is the law that should rule my life, that should rule my actions, that should rule my decision making. And everything I do should be, should be ruled by the love that has been poured out by Holy Spirit, Romans 5.5, 5, in my heart. And now flowing through my heart, through my life, through my, my heart that is a wellspring of life, into my community, starting with my family, actually starting with myself, by loving myself as I love my neighbor. You see, I just want to say, in a marriage, the, your first level of brotherly love is for your husband and your wife. That's your first dimension of brotherly love. Then towards your family, towards your neighbors, and whoever God is sending over your path. So it's very, very important to God that we shall receive our righteousness perched and paid for by faith and now walk in the revealed will of God, walk in a right standing with God, walk in a righteousness before God. And together with that, being filled with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, we live a life of love. We love aboundingly. We do not, you know, expect people to perform, to earn our love, just the way that Jesus did not expect us to perform, to earn his love. Amen? So let us look at the purpose of the manifestation of sonship. So Romans 8 verse 19 to 23 is very clear. The word says, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. So the earnest expectation of the creation, the entire creation in the heavens, on the earth and under the earth, eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him, God, 
who subjected it in hope because the creation itself also will be delivered. It will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So God himself has placed a hope in creation that we as the sons of God, as we are manifested on this earth, that the glorious liberty that we received as children of God, as sons of God, will effect, will deliver the creation from the bondage of the corruption caused by sin. So the entire creation is expectant. The creation has, has this knowledge and this hope that when the sons of God are manifest, the glorious liberty that we have in God as his children will deliver the creation from the bondage um, of corruption, the corruption caused by sin. So, Family, think about it tonight, how it must be for the creation. You know, we just ministered in Malawi in an area that's ruled by a pagan, um, by paganism, okay, by religions that, that worship pagan gods and by deep, deep dimensions of witchcraft. And one of the things that stood out to us as a team is the, the land that's so barren. There's hardly grass. It looks as if nothing wants to grow in the soil where we minister. And the effect of the corruption caused by sin, by paganism and witchcraft is visible. It's visible. And while we were there, I spoke to the team and I said to the team, I actually spoke at the pastor summit concerning the subject of the manifestation of the sons to deliver by our glorious liberty, the creation from the bondage. And I spoke to the pastors and I said to them, imagine if we would take up the mandate and we would set ourselves apart, as I spoke in session one, by purifying ourselves in the hope that we will be like Christ, as Christ is in this world, we are, that's what the word says. So as we purify ourselves and we set ourselves apart and we, we allow the nature of Christ Jesus, who is already in us after salvation, to manifest in us and through us. And we start to do what Jesus Christ did on the earth. He said, we will do bigger things. We will do more things, what he did. And our glorious liberty start to deliver the nature from the bondage that came on it because of witchcraft and paganism and sin and rebellion. Imagine what will happen. You know, when we read in Psalm 149 and, and the last Psalm in the Bible, we see how the end throughout the word, how the entire nature was actually created to worship God, to bring praises to God. And now we, we learn that the, that futility, you know, that creation was subjected to futility. Why? Because of the bondage of the corruption that sin brought. But God wants to use you and he wants to use me to deliver creation from that bondage as we manifest our sonship, as we receive the love that was, was bestowed, on, bestowed on us, we receive that infilling of love and we receive the hope of sonship to be like our forerunner, Jesus Christ, the second Adam, the first son, 
you know, the, the first human being that became a son of God. God had to confirm his sonship in the river of Jordan before John baptized him. God revealed him as his son. But we are also revealed as sons as we take up our mandate as those who receive the glorious liberty, um, you know, as children of God. So verse 22 and 23 says, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. So because the creation has the knowledge that there's a hope to be delivered from the, the, the bondage of corruption, the entire creation, birds, animals, plants, the soil, everything in creation, and we as well, and we will see it in the scriptures, are in, in, in labor, are groaning before God and, 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 and experience labor pains. Why? Because creation wants to see the manifestation of the sons of God. So not only that, says the word, but we also who have this first fruit of the spirit, okay, the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ in us, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. This is so powerful, family. Here we see all of creation, including us, are waiting for our full realization as sons of God, the full manifestation as sons of God. When we walk on this earth as Christ walked, when we do what Jesus did, you know, I will always refer back to John 20, 21, as the Father has sent me, I send you Jesus' words. His entire desire is that we will now take up the fullness of the cross word, everything that the Lord Jesus came to do. We will speak about that in session three. And we take up our full um, uh, responsibility as the royal priests, as the holy nation of God, as being the children of, of, uh, of the, the, the creator of the universe, and as the brothers and sisters of Christ Jesus, the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. We take up our royal position. We take up our royal mandate. And what is that? to come to this earth to manifest as sons and deliver the, the nature, the creation from the bondage, to take authority. You know, they say there's an outbreak of rabies in South Africa. There's an outbreak of a new strain of this coronavirus. But we have the authority to take control and to command rabies to leave this nation, to the feet of Jesus. Why to the feet of Jesus? Go and read Psalm 110 verse 4 and many other places in the word. The word says, my Lord said to your Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies the footstool of your feet. And the Lord says, heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. As sons, we should subject everything to the dominion, the rulership and the reign of Christ Jesus. This is our mandate family. And so everything is groaning and travailing until we grow up and we show up. We should show up. You know what Satan tries to do with this coronavirus thing? Intimidate us. Get us to submit to the fear. Fear to die. Fear to, 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 to uh, in 
end up in hospital. Fear, fear, fear. And with this fear that is, that is being amplified by the media, every dimension of media, news, newspapers, um, Facebook, every dimension of the media is geared. Satan programmed them to bring um, fear into the hearts of God's people. And in them, in that, get us to submit to the wrong domain. While we have this glorious liberty to set creation free. So family, you, you know, God's heart for us is so war and he wants us to realize to to receive a revelation of the royal authority given to us as sons of God and the, the longing in heaven that we will manifest the authority the rulership the reign of God as kings as royal kings of the most high God on earth so the only thing that we don't have yet is immortal bodies, okay? We have everything else. So what we have is the first fruit. We have the Holy Spirit given to us as a, as a signet ring, as an um, uh, engagement ring. The Holy Spirit has been given to us. We need to fully realize and identify with who we are in Christ Jesus. We need to believe the word of God and live a lifestyle of a son of God that trusts him and that entered his rest and that desire to do what he said we need to do. If the word of God says, it's God's will, Colossians 1.20, that everything in heaven and on earth be reconciled to him. He means that. If he says in Colossians 2 verse 14 and 15, that he left every demonic force of every rank and order paralyzed in hell. He means that. He did that. It's finished. If he says that in, in Colossians 2, 14 and 15, that he made a public spe spectacle of every demonic force, of every rank and order. God means that Christ fulfilled that. This becomes my portion as a son, as a child of God. This is the dimension from where I should live. This is how I should speak. When we hear the political people start to speak and prophesy doom and gloom. As children of God, we have the authority to take captive every plot and plan of Satan and, and speak to that plot and plan and command it to fall to the ground, to come to naught, to come to nothing. It is the light of Jesus in us that expels darkness. The light of Jesus manifests itself as the sons of God start to speak the truth, as we start to speak the word of God, as we start to speak the prophetic destiny of God for yourself, your family, your community, our nations. There's many nations watching this, this um, uh, teaching tonight. If we can understand the authority, Jesus in us, and what he wants to do through us, things will change. You know, one of the prayers that God has given me, that Holy Spirit led me to pray, is for our president, that the many voices that is ministering evil counsel to him, will be silenced and that the Holy Spirit's voice will reach his ears, that he will start to hear the spirit of the living God, the counsel of the living God, that he will respond to the spirit, to the voice of the living God. 
That is what I'm praying. That is what I'm longing for to see. Amen? So, the scripture says that the earth is groaning. It is groaning because of the awful pressure that sin is putting upon the earth and all its inhabitants. We feel it, family. The word says in Matthew 5, 9, the sons of God are peacemakers. We are the peacemakers. And it also says the sons are those who disconnect. In other words, peacemakers disconnect the land and its people from the effect and the chaos caused by sin. As Holy Spirit leads us, the word of God says the sons of, of God are led by the Spirit. We are those who are led by the Spirit, who have the counsel of the Lord through the Spirit of God. As sons of God, we need to start and command areas um, uh, um, of barrenness, you know, barren land, to begin to produce the goodness of God, the blessings of God. We can speak to the soil. We can ask God to forgive the sins that caused God barrenness. We can stand in the gap and we can start to speak to the soil to bring forth the goodness of God. Why? God said we will eat from the goodness of the land. We will live from the goodness of the land. It's our portion. We are not supposed to submit to anything that enforce the dominion of Satan. But we are those who enforce the dominion of heaven, the rulership of heaven, the reign of our Jesus Christ on earth. Again, I want to remind us all that 1 John 4, 17 says, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. It is time for the sons of God to be manifest. Our assignment is to set the captives free and to make disciples. Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, the spirit of the Lord rests upon us. Yes, Isaiah 1, 61 verse 1 to 3 was speaking about Jesus. But he said, I am sending you as the Father has sent me. The Spirit of God rests upon us to break chains, to set people free from the prison they are in. The prison can be poverty. The prison can be sexual immorality. The prison can be corruption. Whatever prison we see, we have the authority to set people free. Family, I want to pray for you tonight. And I know because I can feel the longing in Father's heart that we will answer to this high calling as sons of God and that we will manifest the kingdom on the earth as in heaven. So, Father, I thank you for giving us this tremendous responsibility, this tremendous authority, Lord, the power through the Holy Spirit to manifest the glorious liberty that was given to us as sons of God by Christ himself, manifested on earth. I pray, Father, that you make your children bold, courageous. Fill us in a new dimension with your spirit and power and fire. Fire us up, Lord, and let us manifest be ma the manifestation of sonship on this earth in Jesus' mighty name. So, family and friends, may God bless you. May he keep you. May he make his celestial face and light to shine on you and fill your home with shalom, with peace. In Jesus' name, I love you. Have a lovely evening.